The Rise and Fall of Honda Honda Civic, Honda Accord, Honda CRV. There's no car company beloved by so many owners for practical and reliable cars than Honda. Personally, my first car was an early 2000 Honda Accord. With its alert steering and fluid handling, sometimes I felt I was in a sports car hearing the engine rev, even though I was actually in a family sedan. Honda has always been the underdog throughout its history, exceeding everyone's expectations. But few know the difficulties Honda faces now as one of the last few remaining independent car companies in the world. Honda is an amazing company, and I could literally spend days talking about them. But we'll try to keep things short and cover a few key points. In this video, I'll deep dive into the rapid rise of Honda and give you the company insight, how the company rose to greatness in the US, slumped on roadblocks, and now faces serious competition in an environment it has never seen before. But before we begin, if you guys enjoy videos like this, please take a quick second, click the like button, subscribe button, and notification bell to know when new videos come out each week. With that in mind, thanks so, so much for helping on that, and now let's begin the video. The Beginning Honda 101 So we all know Honda now is one of the biggest producers of vehicles in the world. This company produced more than 27 million cars and trucks in the US since 1982. The question is, how did they grow this big? Honda, officially the Honda Motor Company, was established in Japan in 1948. The men behind this phenomenal company were Sochihiro Honda and Takeo Fujisawa. The two created the vision for the company, focusing on innovation and superior engineering. Founder Soichiro Honda once said, We only have one future, and it will be made of our dreams, if we have the courage to challenge convention. And that's how the company started, with building motorcycles, which instantly became a success. Dreaming big from the start. Within seven years, Honda started to grow rapidly and became the top manufacturer in the Japanese motorcycle industry. Seizing this successful moment, Honda wanted to expand their products overseas as they were looking for additional growth opportunities. At first, Honda was only interested in expanding in Southeast Asia. However, after doing market research in the United States, the company completely shifted its focus. Kiachiro Kawishima, who was in charge of international sales, saw the huge opportunity in America as the land of the automobile. His view was shaped around his discovery that cars were an absolute need amid the fast expansion outside the cities and that the United States lacked a viable network of railroads. Which is absolutely true, by the way, and may be the topic of another Company Insight video. He also concluded that motorcycles in the US were seen mainly as extras compared to cars, like toys one could use for leisure or, if one was daring enough, racing. He came back to Japan reinvigorated and determined to succeed in the United States with motorcycles at first. His pitch was simple. If you succeed in the United States, you'll succeed worldwide. If you fail in America, you'll never succeed internationally. A true startup from the beginning. Like a young startup, Honda sent a small team to the West Coast in 1959, and to save money, the entire team shared a one-bedroom apartment and stacked motorcycle crates by hand in the company's warehouse. Although huge in Japan, Honda was nobody in the US, and their products struggled at first. Their motorcycles proved to be too fragile for the sustained speeds and long distances on American roads. They burned their entire $1 million investment from the Minister of Finance in Japan, but luckily created their first hit product, the Honda Super Cub, which was a hybrid between a scooter and conventional motorcycle. It was easy to use, super fuel efficient at 200 miles per gallon, quiet, trendy, and affordable at only $249. Today, the Honda Super Cub is considered the Model T for motorcycles, having sold more than 60 million vehicles and still being sold in 15 countries even today. Unique Advertising In 1961, Honda was expanding its network to over 500 dealers across the US and finally had the budget to spend on advertising. Honda was always different, and that was the case even when it came to advertising. Their first large-scale marketing rollout for the Honda Super Cub was actually created by a UCLA student. 
Rather than the trademark leather jacket biker image, the Honda Super Cub showed suburban dressed people with their kids, cargo, and pets with the tagline, you meet the nicest people on a Honda. Later ads had the Beach Boys chiming in with their little Honda pop tune, extolling the simple joys of riding a Honda Super Cub. This marketing campaign was a huge success and showed that Honda approached everything from a different and innovative perspective. Right products solving the right problems. Naturally, Honda wanted to expand to automobiles. They were already manufacturing cars in Japan and in 1969 launched the Honda 600 sedan, which was a mini car in the US, followed by the Z600, which was the coupe version of the sedan. Sales were promising, but not spectacular. In 1972, Honda launched the Honda Civic, which was met with huge success. The car was the first three-door hatchback ever created and had innovative engineering and was considered to have a roomy interior at the time. Later models also had the new Honda CVCC engine technology, which I'm sure many auto enthusiasts know inside and out. The Civic success led to the Honda Accord in 1976 as a car with more room, power, and quieter than the Civic. Both cars became big successes, with help supported by new emissions control regulations in the 1970s, the shift from leaded to unleaded gasoline, and the oil crisis that led to sky-high gasoline prices. Honda's success in cars continued and manufacturing plants were gradually shifted from motorcycles to cars. The Introduction of Acura In 1986, Honda became the first Japanese company among Toyota and Nissan to introduce a luxury car brand, Acura. With the Acura Integra and Acura Legend, many Honda owners upgraded their cars and Honda was able to capture the premium market as well. From 1989, the Accord was the best-selling car in America, and the Honda Accord and Honda Civic led to many other cars that Honda introduced over time beating American car manufacturers like GM and Ford at their own game. With solid growth around the globe, Honda has spent the last two decades expanding its business into new markets, going boldly into realms ignored by most vehicle manufacturers and keeping the competition honest. Today, Honda is the world's largest engine producer and considered one of the best automobile engineering companies in the world. We could spend another few hours talking about how great Honda is, but I want to talk about some recent roadblocks and some of the challenges they're facing today. Challenge number one, profitability over quality. The 2012 model Honda Civic was a disaster. There's no way to sugarcoat it. Honda took one of their best-selling cars and decided to skip on quality while using many of the same components and systems as the previous year's model including the front and rear suspension systems and the front section of the car. Designers and engineers were told by HQ to make the car smaller and cut production costs to increase profit margins. That Civic model went on sale in the year of 2011 and eventually ended with a ton of criticism. Influential magazine Consumer Reports even dropped the car from its recommended list for the first time since it began rating vehicles in 1993. Civic fans stated that the car was equipped with a poor quality interior and uneven ride. Although all the issues of the Civic were later fixed with the redesign, the fact that the car was even released was really concerning. I had always felt before that Honda was the least commercial of all the auto companies in terms of taking advantage of their customers. I'm thinking of the Ford Pinto and all the identical cars GM released under the GM Pontiac Buick subbrands, and the 2012 Civic left a bad aftertaste in my mind. Had Honda quality come down? It seems more and more people are questioning Honda's legendary quality and reliability now more than ever before, especially after the 2012 Civic. Challenge 2. The future of cars is electric. The automobile industry is in the process of completely evolving. Honda was once at the forefront of electric and hybrid cars, especially with its weird, kinda dorky-looking Honda Insight back in 2000. The Honda Clarity EV was also introduced in 2008 and was one of the first hydrogen fuel cell EV cars, but it was discontinued for 2020. Today, when you think of electric cars, you no longer think of Japanese cars, but you think of Tesla. Also, when you think innovation and the wow factor, you think Tesla, not Honda anymore. To make matters worse, in addition to Tesla, there are Chinese car manufacturers like NIO, which have deep pockets being supported by the Chinese government. 
The problem for Honda is that electric vehicles require heavy investment into R&D, engineering, and technology. And since Honda is a smaller car company, they do not have as many resources as other automobile manufacturers to invest in electric car technology. Analysts estimate Tesla will spend around $50 billion in combined capex and R&D from 2021 through 2025, while GM is targeting to spend $27 billion over a similar horizon. This makes it difficult for a smaller company like Honda to compete as cars move away from a pure manufacturing business to a more technology-driven one. Even Apple has hinted in 2021 on rumors of building an Apple electric vehicle car. That would be a disaster for Honda if Apple decided to work with Hyundai. In April 2020, Honda announced that it would be partnering with General Motors to build two electric vehicles. Later, they also announced that the GM R&D partnership would deepen. Although this will definitely help Honda lower R&D costs and save on investment, even as a Honda fan, I wonder what this signals for Honda and whether it will be beneficial for them in the long run. Most Honda buyers would never consider buying a GM car, after all. Challenge number three, competition from Korea. Before 1998, Hyundai and Kia were completely irrelevant in the auto market in the United States. However, that all changed when Hyundai offered its 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty and followed by Kia shortly thereafter as well. This was a major game-changer in the auto industry at that time. No other car company had guaranteed their quality for so long. After this, the Koreans became a serious competitor each and every year as the quality of their products approached that of Honda and the Koreans continued to undercut Honda in pricing. 20 years ago, the Hyundai Electra was no threat to Honda, but this year, for example, the Hyundai Elantra was the 2021 North American Car of the Year. Now the Hyundai Elantra is a direct threat to the Honda Civic along with the entire Hyundai lineup to all of Honda's cars. Furthermore, the new Genesis brand, which is the luxury carryover for Hyundai, offers incredible value and is a direct threat to Acura. Should Honda slow down innovation or let their guard down on quality, Hyundai and Kia are now ready to take its place. Conclusions. And that brings us to today. From declining quality, struggles in competing with the new wave of electric vehicles and increased competition, Honda is in a much more difficult position than it's ever been. But that doesn't mean you should count Honda out. After all, this car company has always been able to out-innovate and thrive in all situations it's been put in against competitors much bigger and with deeper financial pockets than them. If you were the CEO at Honda Motors, what would you do now? What do you think Honda's options are now? I'd love to hear your thoughts. So with that said, thank you so much for watching my video. There was a significant amount of research and work that went into making this video possible, so if you wouldn't mind giving the video a like or sharing it with your friends, it would really help out a lot. I appreciate it and thank you again for watching. If you enjoy videos like this, be sure to check out some of my other videos like the Rise and Fall of True Religion Genes or the Rise and Fall and Rise Again of Playboy. I'll see you again next week on Company Insight.